seven long months and dozens of hours of work, finally the carbon fiber intake is completely done. So in today's video, I'm gonna go over a cost breakdown, some different dyno graphs and comparisons, and just give a full overview of the project. So we started with part one, making the molds, part two, gathering all of our supplies, part three, making the parts, part four, finishing everything up, part five, dyno tuning. We had some small in-between bonus videos in there. The way the whole system works is we start with a ram intake, which comes in down here through the bumper and feeds air directly into the air box. I'm getting cold air directly from the outside air. Nothing is coming from inside the engine bay. Then we go into our air box, which has a five inch cone filter in it. We've got the three clamps here, so I can easily take it apart. These two pieces have a silicone coupler to hold them together. Got another silicone coupler holding the velocity stack to the Z tube. I relocated the mass airflow sensor under the Z tube just to make this a little bit cleaner. Got a 45 degree silicone intake up here. The larger 75 millimeter throttle body off a of 2010 Maxima. Do a video on one of those later. The aluminum plate holding the throttle body to the plenum. And then we have our large carbon fiber plenum. It incorporates a half inch plenum spacer here and eliminates all extra barbs and nonsense. The gap down in the middle is because there's really not a whole lot of airflow in the middle. All the air goes to each side of the cylinder banks and doesn't really flow around here in the middle according to CAD data gathered by Sasha Anise when he first made one of these, I think six years ago. There is an aluminum bridge down here underneath this using the two holes that were originally there for the, for the factory plenum. What that does is add some support just because all of the engine vacuum is trying to crush this. This has 11 plies of carbon fiber. I originally thought five would do, I was wrong. So I just went ahead and just added all the carbon fiber I had left, make it as strong as I possibly could. Each one of these smaller pieces has three plies of carbon fiber. Aside from the obvious advantage of all of the cold air coming from out here and keeping it contained all the way through, the fact that this is all going to be better flowing than the stock setup, another advantage is obviously carbon fiber is light. So this weighs total about 10 pounds less than the stock setup, and that's whole stock setup. So across everything, saved about 10 pounds. Then on top of that, Carbon fiber is a lot better at resisting heat soak than aluminum is. The factory plenum was aluminum, which is going to heat soak really bad, and that's going to heat up your intake air charge, and that's going to rob you of some power. Most aftermarket intakes are made out of aluminum or stainless steel, which are both going to heat soak. They're sitting right over the top of the headers. This is going to get really hot and rob you of power. A lot of aftermarket air boxes are just open. It's just an open filter right here, sucking in hot air. And even if you have a cold air intake, it's coming all the way up here. You're adding a 90 degree turn, which is always bad for airflow. So as far as I can tell, this is the best routing setup. This is the best material to use. So you have an advantage of a light intake that's not going to heat soak and it's gonna flow better. Really the only drawback is the cost, which we're going to get into now. This list breaks down every single thing that I needed to purchase to build the carbon fiber intake for my 350Z. Total, it'll be about $575 starting from scratch, plus the cost of tuning the car. The foam, epoxy, and all carbon fiber supplies were by Composite Envisions and purchased from Elite Motoring out of Wisconsin. I'll drop a link to their store description below. Really, $575 isn't bad considering a Kinetics V Plus Plenum and an engine long tube cold air intake is gonna run you about $525 plus shipping and tax. So this is pretty much the same exact price, but it's going to be lighter, it's gonna be better at resisting heat soak, and it's probably gonna flow better too. Really the only downside of this project is just the dozens of hours of work it took to create it in the first place, but that's also probably the most satisfying part as well. On this graph, we have five different lines. One for my Soho Dino we just did. One for Palmetto Racing Development from two years ago. The green is a stock manual transmission 2005 350Z. 
Yellow is a stock manual transmission HR 350Z and purple is my dyno line from Soho adjusted for how much power the car would put to the ground with a manual transmission instead of an auto. Here we have the same exact graph but just with torque. Here are the three non-tuning dyno runs I did at Palmetto Racing Development two years ago. I have a large torque spike from the torque converter, which they were able to take out at Soho. I've got some weird waves in both the torque and power band above 4000 RPM, which are now smoothed out. I'm not sure why these registered higher, but it's a different dyno on a different day two years ago, so it could be any number of things. Here are the tuning runs that I did at Soho. Red is an initial dyno run with no tuning whatsoever, and green is post-tuning. The car makes great power up top, which is exactly where I need it. All the tuning gains from about 6200 up. The car is only going to be run to 7200 RPM, just because I don't have a better oil pump in it yet. But all of my gains were up top exactly where I need them. I'm not really concerned about the actual numbers. I'm worried about difference in graph. The graph is what I'm focusing on. That's what I'm excited about. And that's going to be perfect for running on the track. This graph compares a stock VQ35HR through a manual transmission to my car through the 5 speed auto. The torque curves are almost identical. It's within the noise of the dyno. And you look at the power curves, almost identical all the way up to 6250. And then where the HR levels off, my car keeps going. This graph compares the Soho and Palmetto Racing Development dyno sessions. The torque curve and power curve look almost identical. The only difference is that weird spike at 6000 RPM that occurred at PRD. I'm not really worried about numbers to numbers. The graphs look the same, so that kind of supports both of them. But different dyno, different day. All I'm worried about is I know the car is better now than it was based off the two runs at Soho. This graph is by far the most exciting because it compares a stock VQ35DE through a manual transmission to my car if it was adjusted to go through a manual transmission. And you can just see the power curve has quite a bit of difference all the way up to 6,000 and then the stock car starts to fall off and mine just really starts to come alive. Torque curve, big gap all the way across and then again I can carry that all the way out to 7200 where the stock car is to stop at 66. So just showing where I live at the track, the difference is huge which I would love to drive a stock car back to back with my car. I think that'd be really fun to get to feel that difference instead of just seeing it on a graph because it's been a very long time since my car was stock and as it changes slowly over time you kind of lose track of what it used to feel like but this makes it all worth it this big gap is what's really exciting to me and shows that everything i've done has added up to something worthwhile the Punham has about 300 miles on it most of those are highway miles on the drive from charlotte back to charleston it also has the entire dyno tuning session on it, so a lot of hard pulls. I think he did a total of 10 pulls on the intake, plus my two times I drove out and did donuts in the snow and beat on it pretty hard. So it's holding up well. I don't see any signs of deterioration. I am so thrilled with how this turned out. Thank you for coming along this journey with me from an idea that I had five or six years ago to actually having this part here in front of me. It's such a big moment. I'm so excited to finally have this. If you haven't already, go back and check out those other seven videos that came before this. Parts 1 through 5.5. Hit that like button, throw some comments below, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you guys next week. <laughs>